Hello everybody and welcome again. Dennis is here and this is Open Heart Surgery Survivor Series episode number one. Today all I have to do is answer a few questions in regards to why I needed open heart surgery in the first place, what caused it and what exactly was done. So let's begin. My heart surgery uh, or mitral valve replacement was done on June 11th, 2014 after I was diagnosed with infective endocarditis. Infective endocarditis is the infection of inner lining of the heart. And in my case, my ventral valve uh, was infected. In simple English, the way it works, infection gets into the bloodstream, starts circulating, and at some point it rests on the heart or on my mitral valve and starts vegetating, AKA growing. By the time I was diagnosed with endocarditis, my valve was already beyond repair because vegetation has grown too large. So the only way to save it, or actually save me, was to replace it completely and then put the metal one inside. So now I have a prosthetic valve uh, inside of my chest. So exactly what caused an effective endocarditis, that is still up to the speculation. I tend to think that it was a dental work, infection through dental work. And as a matter of fact, American Heart Association named dental work as one of the leading causes of infective endocarditis. So that's pretty much why a lot of my friends and people that I know take uh, antibiotic every time they go to the dentist. In my case, I have to take it every time I go for any invasive work. Four capsules of amoxicillin one hour before I go to see the doctor. So in terms of the surgery itself, you can see or find a few videos on YouTube that show how the surgery was performed. But in short, the sternum is cut open and then the chest is held open by a little metallic crate. Then the heart is stopped before uh, the body is connected to the bypass machine to make sure it continues working when the heart is stopped. Then the valve is replaced and then everything is put back together. So the chest and name of the sternum, the bone in the center is held by the glue and then the eight rings of the steel that go from the bottom to the very top. The way it's done, it's poked through and around the bone, it's tied together, cut, and then it's bent into the bone back and then the, the bone grows around it. So I have eight rings of those right here. In addition to that, I also had the wire hanging from my chest and that was uh, the electrodes that were used to restart the heart after uh, I was sewn back in. There was one more thing that was inside that was sticking out from me. They were chest tubes that were used for drainage. There were two chest tubes that split onto four lumens like this. They were in the upper abdomen and they, lit, they were leading to the two buckets uh, that were collecting um, drainage that were on both sides of me. So when the chest tubes were taken out and the wire was taken out, it wasn't actually as painful as it was threatened for me to be. So um, the surgery was on Wednesday and then I was let go on Monday. So for the first few days while I was in the hospital, I had to get used to some medication, uh, learn how to talk and how to walk back again, and then get some idea of living right after that. So medication, recovery, and everything that followed after, I'll be talking about in my uh, following videos. But if you have any questions about this episode, the previous one, or the whole subject in general, please put them in the comments below. So that was episode one, and I kind of covered about covered uh, infective endocarditis a little bit, my particular open heart surgery, mitral valve replacement, and the procedure itself, and a few days that follow. So I hope it, this video becomes beneficial, informative, and it can do some good to you or to anybody that you know. So please share it uh, and then depending on when you're watching this, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and have a great weekend. Take care.